Hey everybody, uh, this is Jeff. I'm here with the Caterpillar 931. Um, working on it for the last few days. I had a little bit of an issue. I was driving it, moving it from one spot to another, and all of a sudden I heard like a pop sound up front, and then uh, all of a sudden a loud squealing sound, and a lot of smoke was coming out from under the hood. So I stopped the machine, I opened it up, and I saw smoke pouring out of it, and I could see pretty obviously that the, uh, the belt had gotten all mangled inside the uh, under the hood, and the fan had actually broken off, and it got wedged down in front of the radiator, and it did look like it caused a little bit of damage to the radiator, but um, I think that it's manageable, so I went ahead and I took out the old water pump and I was looking at it and trying to figure out exactly what happened and after removing the water pump it became obvious that the um, the axle that goes through the bearings had actually snapped off so I went ahead and I bought a new water pump I got it on eBay it's pretty easy to find there's they're all over the place apparently they're aftermarket parts I didn't get it from Caterpillar because they charge quite a bit for the original uh, equipment manufacturer type stuff so I went ahead and I got the uh, aftermarket one and it seemed to fit pretty good and um, I've got it in I was able to get the fan back on which was quite a challenge I had to remove the entire hood I removed the side panels and I uh, removed a protective guard that went around the fan uh, right up against the radiator that thing was a real pain to get off but once I got it off, I was actually I had just enough room to get the fan back on without having to remove the radiator. So right now the big unknowns are I haven't I haven't started it up yet, so I don't know how much I'm going to be leaking fluid. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad, and it's just something I can keep an eye on. Worst case, I might have to take out the radiator and have it rebuilt. So um, I'd like to show you a little bit about what it was that I was dealing with and show you how I was able to get some of the parts back together. So first things first, I've got the side off of this right now. Uh, it's an old machine, as you know. It's uh, late 70s, so it has, has very limited electronics in it, which is good for me because I'm no mechanic and I'm certainly no electrician. So having things nice and simple is good for me. I can kind of get in there and uh, work and replace obvious looking parts. So in here we've got the alternator on the side, but right behind that is the fan and there's a pulley on it and behind that pulley is the water pump. So I was able to get that fan out of the way, but I basically moved it down between the front of the radiator or the back of the radiator and uh, the pulley that's coming out of the drive shaft on the engine there and I got it out of the way just enough so that I could remove the entire water pump. So this is a view from the other side. The water pump is right behind here and then the fan is right here. It has four bolts on the front of it so if you can see in there uh, it was quite a tight fit to get those bolts in and be able to tighten them and it was even more difficult with the fan in the way so I had to move the fan all the way down as far as I could so that I could get the water pump back on put this pulley back on and then of course bolt this right in place so in order to do that I did end up taking off this hood uh, which was a lot it was that thing has got to be maybe 100, 150 pounds of steel that I had to pick up and move out of the way. And then, of course, I had to disconnect the air filter and then take off the exhaust pipe. But other than that, it just came right off and then it gave me quite a bit of access to the machine here. And then, of course, I removed the... Uh, I removed the let's see the exit exhaust from the from the radiator and uh, it goes down into here I had to remove this pipe and hopefully that won't need to be replaced I'm looking to just put that right back on with the clamps that were on it before 
And then for right now, when in order to get this thing back up and running, I need to put the belt back on, the, the new belt that I purchased on eBay. And then I gotta put a little bit of fluid in it because when I took that pump off, I knew that it was gonna drain fluid, some coolant, so I put a big pan underneath the machine and um, I was able to catch probably 95% of it, which was good. I didn't want it all over the ground, I'm, especially because I'm actually parked in the middle of the woods here. I'm kind of on a stream a little bit and I did not want to get coolant all over in the stream water because this stream goes downhill towards my cows and I really don't want them drinking this stuff. So right here I have the original water pump. It's just a big piece of steel. It's got a couple bearings in it. And then this shaft right here actually has a bolt that goes inside of it. And if you look closely, you can actually see it just sheared off. And there was no fix in that. So uh, I went ahead and I found a part number on in the manual for uh, Caterpillar's 931 and I was able to find a direct replacement. This one was actually a little tricky because it only goes on one way and I didn't realize that so when I was trying to get the bolt holes to line up it was trial and error and I ended up getting the uh, gasket that came with the new one all wet and then of course it just deteriorated. But fortunately I had I didn't know that the pump came with a gasket so I had purchased a gasket uh, material from AutoZone and I had it already I just had to cut a couple pieces and it was fine so I got that this in this one's the old one it's probably gonna you know go to the scrap heap I might keep it for parts I don't know but this is the belt and this thing is no longer straight um, it just it is just all mangled and I think I burned a hole in one side of it, so it was no good, but I was able to measure it and I found a belt that seems to be a good replacement for it. It's the same width, it's about the same length, I think that it might be a little shorter, which is fine, because when you hook it up with the alternator, the alternator can move in and out, of course it's not going to move when I'm trying to do it, but it allows you to tension it based on how tight you pull the alternator up against the belt. So I should have a little bit of wiggle room and uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. I'm going to try to get that belt on, put some fluid in the machine and hopefully I'll be able to get it up and running.
All right, I'm up in the cockpit of the Cat 931. Uh, I got the belt back on. I tightened it. According to the specs, you're supposed to have a little bit of play, but not very much, like a half an inch at the most. So I tightened it the best I could. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, it's an old machine. It'll work. I uh, cleaned out the radiator hose that's coming out of the top of the radiator going into the water pump and uh, I refilled it and then lastly uh, when I was taking the hood off the other day I actually broke a bolt that is seems to be a uh, harness for the radiator it's um, it's bolted to the frame of the machine but it has a little bit of play in it I assume that's just to absorb some of the shock from the uh, jolting around as you're driving this thing and of course the bolts were seized up so I was trying to take one off I broke it so I just replaced that. Uh, I have not bolted down the hood or the side panels yet. I'm just going to start it up and see see if it runs and see if it throws coolant all over the place. I'm hoping it doesn't, but you never really know with these things. Almost. Yep, she's a smoker. Let's uh, warm up the glow plugs a little bit. started up it seemed to be running okay the the hose on the top of the radiator seems dry however it does look like there's a little bit of fluid coming out from the pump itself so I'm not sure if I didn't tighten it down enough or what it is that's leaking I don't think I spilled any coolant when I was pouring it in plus where it's wet is on the other side of the engine so I'm thinking I might have to take this thing apart again so we'll uh, take a look around and I'll see what I'm going to do next. Well I got the pulley back off and it looks like the issue is my uh, hand cut gasket. Looks like I didn't do a very good job keeping it flat. Um, I know I didn't tear it when I put it in. I was pretty careful about that. So looks like I'm going to have to take the uh, water pump out again and try to either make a new gasket or figure out some other way to keep it from leaking. So uh, I think this is now going to become a part one, part two because there's no way I'm doing that again today. So for now I will leave it and do a little research, figure out what the best way to get that gasket in there without leaking is and then I will work on it some more. So if you guys want to come back and see what I do 
um, please feel free to subscribe. Um, it'll be a part two, and until then, um, Lord willing, I'll be back with another video. All right, thank you.